The Bunny Graveyard is a game full of mysteries. Only one of five chapters is released, leaving much still unseen. Despite this, the game manages to present a lot of information about its world, and hints towards the greater plot. Some of these elements are obvious. The portals are tubed networks of purple rings connecting different worlds. They're given center stage at the beginning and end of chapter 1. Other elements, though, may fall a bit more under the radar, some going relatively unnoticed. However, if you look with a keen eye, you might notice some motifs that appear and reappear in different places. These elements I find especially interesting. Potential foreshadowing that's meant to take a backseat. They're meant to go largely unnoticed, but still lurk just past the surface. Hearts, eyes, and even doors. The focus of this video. Most players will probably be confused by this. Doors? What do doors have to do with this game? Sure, they exist. I've used them, but they're not special in any way. Sure, the game has a lot of doors, but I haven't seen any deep analysis on the windows and floors, so what gives? While I wouldn't blame players for not noticing any special doors in the final release, in older versions, they appear in some pretty hard-to-miss places. Going to the Pichon Games YouTube channel, you can find the game's official trailer from a year ago. Towards the end, we see what looks like the last act of Chapter 1. First is a shot of Sylvie spotting us in the tunnels. This is almost, if not exactly, the same as the final. The next shot is a lot stranger. We see a scene that looks like it never made it into the final version. Surrounded by the void, the world between realms, is a door. It looks tattered and is surrounded by black goo on the edges. As the cursor tries to interact with it, Sylvie appears from above and stops them, saying, not so fast. To anyone who's completed the game, it should be clear that this is the end of the chapter. The clip of the tunnels right before, the void in the background, and Sylvie's not so fast, hinting that the cursor was just about to escape. Unlike the final ending, this version has them using a door rather than enter through the portal directly. Adding to this, the door resembles the one in front of Sky's house. Here though, rather than a generic bunny emblem to represent her family as a whole, the eye patch indicates this is a door specifically to her. Whereas the cursor end up at the end of all this in the final, right in front of her house, just as she opens the door. It's not just this cut ending either. The oldest public demo gives us an even clearer picture of how these doors probably worked. Act 1 has significant differences from then to now. In the final version most people have seen, the cursor enters a dark abyss, where a crack in the monitor opens, linking the world in and outside the computer. In the demo, however, they come across a door. This door is decorated with red, blue, and purple flowers, just like the ones we see in the garden. After opening the door by clicking on it, events play out just like the final. The only difference is that we enter through the door instead of a crack, which still has the portal behind it. The door even has a metal bar at the bottom, resembling the one from the trailer. Let's review what we know about the doors so far. The kind of doors I'm talking about act as links between worlds. Both doors discussed so far connect to vastly different settings, and both places those doors lead to are the focus of their respective chapter. These doors have been decorated in a way that ties them directly to the areas they open to. This context is important to understanding the conclusions reached later on, so please keep them in mind. So far, the only doors I've talked about have been cut from the game, but I hope the significance of where they're placed is enough to convince you that they're important. Don't worry, I am going to talk about content that appears in the actual game. In fact, it's one of the oldest and most important parts of it, the intro. The intro to the Bunny Graveyard has a lot of abstract imagery, but it's not random. It acts as a teaser for elements of the game to come, and it's fair to say we won't fully understand it until more is out. Still, we can glean some meaningful information from it. Specifically, I hope to connect the intro to an old teaser game, in a way I have no doubt was intentional. While I am very confident in the connection I plan to make, I still need to give a very important disclaimer. The teaser game, 4-1-1992, is not canon. It was, but after rewrites, it no longer fits cleanly into the story as it is now. In most cases, this would mean disregarding it as outdated. Sure, maybe old content can tell us about developer intent, but any in-universe information is dubious knowledge. While I tend to agree with these arguments for most media, 4-1-1992, in the context of this theory, is a bit different. The game's intro has existed in its current form for a long time. There's a screenshot of the game's texture page from July 2022, three months after the release of the teaser game. The teaser was created just before a total rewrite of the game's story, at most three months after its release. 
We know this due to the lead developer confirming the intro was created after the rewrite, and because of the texture page being posted three months later showing that very same intro. The intro was created after the game underwent significant changes, changes that are now set in stone. Despite the teaser itself being outdated, the fact the intro deliberately references the same imagery as I'm about to get into should tell you that something important, something specific, carries over. This game still holds significance to the doors, and it's not just me saying that, it comes straight from one of the developers on Discord. It may not be canon, but there's still a message being communicated that stands now. Despite the game's literal meaning being undercut, elements of it tease parts of the world that matter even now. 4-1-1992 has the player guessing 5 letter codes from pictures and entering them as numbers into a computer. Each correct code transports the player into a different scene. Each scene has a note associated with it, which through context clues, we can find out are written by Sky. Each of these scenes represent distinct environments, and are accessed via entering the computer. They each have unique settings, their own distinct worlds. Some of you might find that idea familiar. In the intro to the game, multiple scenes depict four repeating colors, red, blue, purple, and green. We see them first when dead bunny heads pop in and out of the screen. The next time, they appear as various objects going in various directions across the screen in a very chaotic way. I'll get back to this in a bit, so keep a pin in it. Finally is something we should be familiar with by now, doors. Four doors are placed radially, and the light shines on each of them. Each of the four doors depicts a unique background when the lights are on them. The red door has a background full of carrots. The purple door has a background full of purple rings, clearly portals. The green door has a background full of swords and what looks like green foliage. Lastly, the blue door gets cut off a bit by a transition, but the element in front is transparent. Doing some editing, we can clearly see the background is full of planets and stars. There's even a spaceship thrown in for good measure. Looking back at the scenes from 4-1-1992... Hey, wait a minute. The carrot, dream, sword, and space codes seem to match up exactly with what's shown behind the portals. These similar themes would already seem suspicious because of how specific they are, but even the color schemes are the same. I even tried throwing screenshots into a color averaging site, and while they're not exactly the same, they're pretty similar. The similarities are too specific for me to see this as anything but intentional choice. The scenes depicted in 4-1-1992 directly tie to the doors, no doubt about it. Now that we know these two are connected, what does the intro or the teaser game tell us? To start with what we already know, the doors represent different settings. Both of the game's major settings so far take heavy inspiration from games and game genres. The Bunny Garden, presented as a game even in-universe, is your typical cozy farming or gardening sim. Think Harvest Moon in Stardew Valley. Carrot Town, the setting of Chapter 2, was one of the only settings when the game was first created. Originally, the Bunny Graveyard was going to be a free game, and a short one at that, only lasting about 30 minutes. It was meant to be a small side project. Things have changed a lot since then. It's confirmed the original version of the game was heavily inspired by Luigi's Mansion, and considering the similarities to nowadays, it seems like that's carried over. Both of these worlds are based heavily off of tropes in gaming. If you're with the idea that pattern might continue, everything starts to fall into place. I'll start with the ones that are easier to understand. The first code is space, which Claudio seems to be a fan of himself. Uh, who's Claudio, you might be asking? Claudio is Sky's older brother, yet to be properly introduced in the game itself. Sky's journey is all about trying to rescue him after he's been taken away. With the context out of the way, the code space leads to a starry background with what looks like either clouds or stardust. The associated note talks about how Claudio introduced Sky to a video game he enjoys, and now she's totally hooked. If I had a wager, it seems like a riff of Star Fox. The note even shows a drawing of a spaceship, similar to the one from the doors, attacking what looks like a floating head. In the intro, it's depicted with the spaceship flying past planets and stars in the background. This ship seems very similar to the one in Sky's drawing. Maybe the world in the blue door is literally the game she talks about, but it's probably just similar to it. Next is the code sword, which leads to a scene of a sword stuck in the middle of a forest that looks right out of a fantasy book. Dramatic clouds surround it. The note talks about a movie that Sky saw. She forgot most of the story, but thought the sword was really cool, wishing she owned one. To me, this theme seems to be clearly based off of Zelda. The scene in 1992 specifically reminds me of where you get the Master Sword in Breath of the Wild. Comparing it with the screenshot, the resemblance is clear. 
The game's top-down perspective and Sky's desire to use a sword makes it easy to imagine what a chapter like this could be like. Pishan is also a fan of Zelda himself, but then again, who isn't? I hope I've been able to convince you of the game trope theme so far, because these next two are where themes get a bit hairy. Just stick with me. Considering there's only four doors, but five chapters, it seems like one is missing, and that it definitely has to be chapter one. No theming around gardening, or even bunnies to be found. That means one of the two doors remaining represents chapter two. The red door, associated with the code feast, has carrots in its background. The purple door, associated with the code dream, has portal rings in its background. If the intro was all we had to work with, I probably couldn't tell you which candidate was more likely. Portals are important to the game overall, and Chapter 2 is shaping up to expand on the world building. On the other hand, carrots are what the setting Carrot Town is named after. The chapter icon is even the strange looking carrot emblem on Sky's sweater. Looking into 1992 actually gives us some pointers that make me feel more confident one way than the other. Sorry to drop this on you, but this is needed context for what I'm about to say. For reasons that could have their own video, I theorize Sky is directly tied to the portals. I hope you can run with that assumption for the rest of the theory, but just so you don't have to take me at my word, let's have a lore speed round! At the end of chapter 1, the portal activates suddenly as the cursor is sucked in. By the time they arrive in Carrot Town, Sky wakes up and leaves out the front door, meeting them for the first time. Old footage tells us she only woke up moments before, which lines up well with the portals turning on. An old video of the computer room shows equipment monitoring Sky's status, then being asleep. This implies that whether she's asleep or not is important. The monitor across from it also shows the portal in some window being kept track of. If you got all the collectibles in chapter 1, a still unnamed bunny in a blindfold will be frustrated that she's awake. He's also in the middle of the void, surrounded by portals. Seeing as the portals being activated would be his only tell of what's happening, and the computer to monitor tracking if Sky's asleep, it seems like he's talking about her. And in the piece of evidence just coming up, it's even directly shown that Sky's been dreaming about the portals repeatedly. She even says they're taking her somewhere, not to mention all the promotional art of Sky in the void. Sure, same goes for Sylvie, but her connection to the portal is stronger than any other character in Chapter 1 besides the damn cursor themselves. Ahem. So with Sky's connection to activating the portals, we can start to reframe the purple door. Chapter 2 is Sky's introduction, and the end of the chapter just before is all about the portals. The chapter icon isn't a carrot because it represents Carrot Town. It represents one of the main features of Sky's outfit. The icon doesn't represent the setting, it represents Sky. We already know what game Chapter 2 takes inspiration from. Purple rings may not tie into any clear gaming trope, but they do connect with Sky. While the chapters may be based off tropes in gaming, that fact also doesn't define their whole identity. Since Chapter 2 is the introduction of our main character, who has strange portal powers, it makes sense to make her the focus of its visual identity. With that out of the way, we're left with the red door. Carrots dot the background here, and while they share the namesake with Carrot Town, that's about it. Luigi's Mansion is the primary inspiration for Chapter 2, and that game wasn't food-centric in the slightest. Old descriptions hinting at a haunted castle in Carrot Town seem to even further separate it from food. The idea that this imagery of carrots has more to do with the vegetable itself than the town is supported by Feast being the code connected to it. This leads me to believe the setting is focused around food and cooking. 1992 gives us more than the code to push things further in that direction. The scene you get after entering it depicts a table with an empty plate, and Sky's note is all about how much her mom loves eating carrots. A food theme would also fit in with the gaming tropes, since cooking games are their own popular genre. That'd be my bet for this part of the game. Something along the lines of either Cooking Mama or Overcooked. With all that, I think I've been able to tie the doors to the chapter themes, and even the chapter themes to their respective inspirations. While there's no great way to know what order the future themes appear in, I have confidence that they are indeed future themes. Personally, I feel like the order will be something like Gardening Games, Luigi's Mansion, Zelda, Cooking Games, and then Space. I don't have any proof of that, I just feel like space would come last, especially seeing as our space fan Claudio is basically the Princess Peach of this game. And the other two before, uh... I honestly have no idea. While this gaming parallel is the main piece of information I wanted to prove with this video, and I think I've done a good enough job at that, I'm not done yet. There's some more information that doesn't wrap up neatly into my main point, but is still worth pointing out. I'd also like to add some speculation about things we've seen. To start, remember that part of the intro I told you to put a pin in? Here, watch it again, but with the context I've just shown you. Notice that? Each of the colored objects corresponds to the themes from the doors, and with the same colors no less. We see a green sword cutting a red carrot, then we see a purple ring move across the screen. 
Overlaying the different frames, we can see the ring follows a wavy tube shape, just like the portals. There's also a blue object I originally thought was a throwing star. Looking at the door scene, we can see that it's the same spaceship we saw then. That explains why it suddenly speeds up and zips off screen. They've gone plaid. I also noticed this dark sphere thing that pops up and goes away. I have no idea personally what this is, but I may as well point it out. Since at least two of the three of these sections tie back to each other in clear ways, it seems like the first one would too, but I couldn't find any silver bullet evidence for what the dead bunny heads are. Still, there's one interpretation I find compelling. Just before the bunny heads pop out, we see Sky and Claudio's ears at the bottom and top of the screen respectively. The dead bunny heads show up immediately after. Not only that, but they show up from the top and bottom of the screen. The best explanation I can find is that these represent dead versions of Sky and Claudio. While it may seem kind of obvious explained that way, there's no way of knowing for sure, so I don't feel comfortable saying it's definitely them. Also, the implications of that are way too much to get into here. This video is long enough. I encourage you to think of your own connections, but we just may not have enough evidence to tie these together properly yet, even if the other scenes suggest they're probably related. On the more speculative side, I have to wonder if the doors in the intro exist in an actual place. Unlike other scenes where objects float and move around in nothing land, the doors stay in place and seem to have the same ground level. They're placed around in almost an arc. Adding to the physicality, they're all shaded, with a light going over each one. I interpret this scene then as a character, perhaps Sky with her flashlight, discovering the doors in a special room. With doors to the settings of four of the other chapters, one may be asking where the fifth door is. Well, in 1992, we see five colors for each number we use to enter the codes. Four of these colors should be familiar by now. The red, blue, purple, green, and orange. If there is a fifth door, we'd know what color it would be, and we know what chapter it would represent. The first. This is the chapter being played and where Sylvie resides. A door to the garden probably exists, but in the intro, it happens to be omitted. The truth is, I don't know where the fifth door is, but I'd know what it would probably be. With that said, we now have a series of colors associated with doors, each associated with chapters. If we look at the chapter icons we have now, a near-perfect RGB green and orange, just like the colors from the code. That's right, I think the code colors are actually the chapter colors. They're mixed up since green here represent the sword instead of the garden, and purple represents Carrot Town instead of orange. Still, the fact that both chapter colors we know match with the code colors, which are already tied to chapter themes, as I discussed, makes me feel like this is probably right. Still, it falls on the more speculative side, but I think it makes sense. For something more concrete, the four colors also show up in the game's current main menu. The void is clearly visible in the backdrop, and changes color to match the current button. The four big ones each representing one of the four colors. Even the clues menu gets in on this, with the abstract shapes in its background. I'll also point out that these background shapes are awfully familiar to the ones that they have with the dead bunnies. The shapes are darkened compared to the foreground, and there's one kind for each color. The red and green shapes match really closely, which excited me, but the purple and blue shapes are different enough they bring the connection down a fair bit. At the very least, the color choice seems on purpose, but it might not be referencing that scene and might literally just be funky shapes for a cool menu. In a much older example, an old video of the computer room shows a somewhat distant machine. All the bits that light up display not just the four door colors, but all five proposed chapter colors. While this is pre-rewrite, the visual language seems to communicate that this machine contains access to all five main areas of the game. Developer Jorge also commented on the doors in a way that made me go insane. I'll put the full conversation up here. Basically, there's something important relative to the doors. The way he words it is really weird, but I read it like this. There's something that's changing about something. Present tense. Whatever this change is affects the doors. Perhaps this is referring to Sky waking up, changing the doors to be active, but it could also easily be something else. Lastly, there's another door we see outside the intro, and it's in the set of statues within the labyrinth. These statues depict important iconography to the story, existing as food for speculation. One of these important statues is just a plain door that looks a lot like the ones we see in the intro, lacking any fancy decoration. I think it might actually be the fifth door, but since it looks like the other stone statues, I'm not too sure of its functionality. Still, if it was a functioning door, that might hint at what the room in the intro actually is if it specifically exists. 
keep in mind this is super speculative. The door room may have been a place C, and whoever they might have worked with, used to explore other realms. As we read C's notes, we see that they went to the garden on purpose, and entered just through the tunnels. This is exactly the place that both the door and the massive portal are now. With the cursor and boxers ending up in different places, jumping right into a portal can throw you all over the place. The doors seem like a way to travel where you know where you'll end up. This would explain why they exist in the narrative when portals are already a thing. Portals are unpredictable, but doors have actual destinations. So that's everything I know about doors in the bunny graveyard. Everything important at least. Originally I hoped to make this video about the one connection to the chapters and gaming tropes, but I ended up piecing together a lot more info than I originally expected. Some of this info was definitive and only strengthened my conviction. Others left me with even more questions, and I needed to expand the analysis. I want to thank Jorge and the other members of the Pichon Cave Discord server for encouraging me to make this video. I also want to thank Midori for doing a lot of the discussion about the doors that inspired me to investigate them as well. Thank you to Mary as well for proofreading the script and bringing some good points that I wouldn't have added otherwise. The mysteries in this game are something that are fascinating to me, so I plan to cover this game more in the future. Good morning, and in case I don't see ya, Good afternoon, good evening, and good night.